Ladies and gentlemen, did you have a time in your life where you had extreme suffering? Extreme. Very difficult times. Have you ever faced periods where you're just going on crying and sobbing and and it's not helping? Every morning you get up and you shed tears. Has it ever happened with you? If not, then you are lucky. <laughs> but if yes, if it has happened to you, then it's most likely because your 8th house was activated. The 8th house is the graveyard, it's the smashan, it is where things die. So therefore, if you have experienced such level of pain in your life, then make sure you do some remedies for the 8th house because if the 8th house has given you this pain in the dasha, then it means you have very, very, very serious karmic baggage. And disclaimer before I begin, this video is going to be heavy. <laughs> so, if you cannot digest poison, then please move out of here. This is not the place for you. If you cannot hear strong things, then please move out. This is not the right place for you. But if you have experienced quadruple exponential astronomical suffering, which normally people don't experience, whichever area of life it is, does not matter, then your 8th house is punishing you. So, that means we need to do remedies for the 8th house. Now, if you do all these remedies, does it mean that the next time when your 8th house is activated, you will not face any of the problems that you faced before? Well, Certainly, maybe not. Maybe yes, maybe not. But the more you do these remedies, the more they will help you to cleanse your karma. Eighth house represents all the fructification of the sins that you have committed in your previous lifetimes. And now that is coming and haunting us back. All right. So therefore, if you have faced suffering like nobody else, then please do the remedies. I request you with folded hands. All right. Of course, these are not the only eight remedies. You can do other remedies also, but today is 17th. So the basic day is eight and eighth house, eight remedies. All right. Thank you so much for your patience. Let us begin the remedies. So the first remedy, this is the most important of all remedies. You do all the other remedies, but you don't do this. Not of much use. Okay. What is the first remedy? If you go to Srimad Bhagavatam, 5th canto, 5th chapter, 2nd verse, the great personality Vishnu Avatar, Shaktyavesh Avatar, Rishabh Dev is explaining to his sons and especially the eldest of uh, all, the most qualified Bharat Maharaj, after whom the Holy Land of India is named. He says in 5.5.2 of Srimad Bhagavatam, he says, Mahat Sevanam Dwaram Ahur Vimukteshu. He says this, right? So what does this mean? Let me read out the translation of the shloka. Bear with me please. One can attain the path of liberation from material bondage only by rendering service to highly advanced spiritual personalities Vishnu himself is telling this. Don't ignore. These personalities are impersonalists and devotees. Whether one wants to merge into the Lord's existence or wants to associate with the personality of Godhead, one should render service to the Mahatmas. In Gita Krishna also says, Mahatmanas to Maam Partha Daivim Prakriti Vashita Bhajanti Ananya Manaso Gyatva Bhuta Dinobya For those who are not interested in such activities, who associate with people who are fond of women and sex, the path to hell is wide open. The Mahatmas are equipoised. They do not see any difference between one living entity and another. They are peaceful and fully engaged in devotional service. They are devoid of anger and they work for the benefit of everyone. They do not behave in any abominable way. Such people are known as Mahatmas, right? So, Krishna also says this in the Gita. Mahatma Rastu Mahampartha Daivim Prakriti Mahashetam. Mahatma is one who takes shelter of my divine internal potency. Right? So, what is Krishna's internal potency? It represents a person who is cultivating or who is behaving he, he, as per the word of the scriptures, one who is cultivating spiritual knowledge. 
one who is engaged in devotional service and spiritual life. This is who is a Mahatma basically, all right. So therefore, whenever you meet such great personalities who have dedicated their life for a spiritual cause, please go and serve them. Try to do, try to ask them, what can I do for you? Whoever that person is, please do that and take their blessings. Without that, there is no hope. There is absolutely no hope. No other remedy will work if you don't do that. All right. You, you give a thousand million donations, waste of time and money. Okay. Nothing's going to work. With the eighth house, only great personalities can take you out. When you serve them and when they are happy and when they bless you, only then the sins of a million, billion, trillion lifetimes will go. Otherwise, it will all go in vain. All right. So please take the time to serve some great personality. Invite them to your house for food, for prasad. And when you invite them, please shut your mouth. <laughs> shut your mouth. Just shut up and listen to them. Just let them talk. Talk about what? Politics. <laughs> no, not politics. Let them talk about spiritual wisdom. Let them talk about the wisdom of the scriptures from the Vedas, the Puranas, Upanishads, the Sutras, Mudras, Yantra, Tantra, Mantra, Jyotish. <laughs> Let them talk, alright? Please shut your mouth. I've, I've seen people, they will invite sadhus to their homes and they will go on blabbering like dogs and pigs. Please don't do that, alright? Please don't be like dogs and pigs, blabbering all the time. Let them talk, please. <laughs> all right so now you have done this then the second remedy very 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 important please chant this mantra 108 times every day om namo narayanaya om namo narayanaya om namo narayanaya please chant this mantra this mantra is dedicated created for the eighth house all right so this mantra was propagated by non uh, by none other than the great Ramanujacharya from the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya. And therefore, if you chant this mantra, this mantra will give you freedom from all anxieties. So please chant this mantra 108 times every day in a mala, in beads, not in hand, not in counter, not in mobile, not in your mind. Chant it the way I have done it. You don't have to chant, Om oh, no, Namo you don't have to chant, Om oh, Namo no, you don't have to do that. Just do as I did before, alright? <laughs> no confusion. So do this at least 108 times, one mala, if required, do it four times, alright? Four into 108, if required, do more than that, alright? Because when the 8th house catches you, the only person who can protect you is Narayan, nobody else. Number three, you can do the Vishnu Sastanam. Very, very, very important. Recently, I made a video on 10 benefits astrologically of reading the Vishnu Sastanam every day. So many people have asked me, you know, should I read, listen or what? Well, first, if you don't know to read, then first you can listen. You can go to YouTube. You can type uh, Vishnu Sastanam. You will find MS Subalakshmi's, uh, that famous audio video you'll find. You can hear that. That will help you. Please try to do it every day in the morning. You can also do it in the evening or in the night. But best is to do it in the morning always. Any spiritual practice unless exclusively recommended by your guru or you are doing a Gayatri in the evening. Alright? If you are Brahmin initiated. So please do the Vishnu Sastram in the morning. If you cannot speak, if you are a Westerner and you don't know Sanskrit or you are a modern secular Hindu <laughs> modern uh, educated Hindu in uh, English language then uh, you, you have no idea of Sanskrit that's fine please hear it alright just keep playing the audio if you ca can't like um, if you don't understand the meaning then also it's fine but eventually try to chant it yourself and also understand the meaning gradually alright I also have a Vishnu Sasanam playlist please watch that Okay, very 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 important don't miss the Vishnu Sasanam very 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 important thousand names of Vishnu. Very, very, very important. That will give you freedom from all your anxieties. All right. The eighth house gives you anxiety. Number four. This is very, very, very important. If the eighth house is tormenting you, then you have already committed a lot of sins. <laughs> and what are some of the sins 
that we commit almost every day. Hmm? Well, it is eating meat, right? Meat, fish and eggs. So, if the 8th house is tormenting you or even if it is not, complete full stop to any kind of meat, fish and eggs. Stop roaming with meat eaters. Please stop doing it. All right. Unless they are your parents and you have to stay with them. Otherwise, please reduce your contact. Stop roaming with meat eaters. Because if you do spiritual mantras, remedies, all fancy stuff and you are roaming and hovering around with those who are eating meat and alcohol and, you know, um, fish, eggs. It's a matter of time. You will fall back, sir. Madam, you can't continue. You are not a superman. You are not a superwoman. All right. You cannot stop eating meat if you are hanging around with meat eaters. It can't work. So, reduce your contact. All right. <laughs> because the more you continue to kill animals, the more you continue to give pain to others, the more the pain will come back. All right. And when the eighth house opens, it will not spare you. It won't spare you. All right. Number five, very, very, very important. If required and if possible, please do some Narsimha Yagya or Narsimha Abhishek will also work, but preferably do Narsimha Yagya. If you are really interested to do this, then please go to Ahobilam in South India. There you have many temples of Lord Narsimha Dev and there you will have, you know, Jala Narsimha, Ugra Narsimha, Lakshmi Narsimha, I think Palal Narsimha is also there, I'm not sure. But yeah, there are many temples of Lord Narsimha Dev. So please go there and do some yagya there, alright? You don't have to spend like a million dollars, you don't have to spend 10 lakh rupees. Just take a train ticket and go and do some yagya, stay there one or two days and then you can come back, alright? It will be done in like, you know, maybe 10, 15 thousand rupees. I'm not endorsing anyone, I, I, I don't have any contacts there, so I'm not marketing this, I'm not propagating this, but this is for your benefit. And when you are doing this, please pray to Narasimha Dev for protection because the original 8th house is Scorpio and Scorpio is lauded by Mars and Narasimha Dev is the avatar for Mangal. And please request his protection like the way Prahlad Maharaj prayed to him always. So therefore, along with Lord Narasimha Dev, don't forget to pray to Prahlad Maharaj also. All right, very, very, very important. And the great Prahlad Maharaj, when he was 5 years old, God personally descended to this earth to protect him. Can you believe? Can you believe it? Five years and God came personally and he ripped off his father Hirana Kashyapu because he tormented Prahlad Maharaj, right? So please read more about Narsimade Prahlad Maharaj. You can find it in the seventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. All right, very, very, very important. Don't forget to do this. Otherwise, this is problematic, all right? Please do that, all right? Number six, very important. Please do some donations on the 8th Lord's Day. So, for example, if you are uh, Aries Ascendant, then your 8th Lord is Mars, right? <clears throat> your Lagnesh is also Mars, but your 8th Lord is also Mars. So, please do some donations on Tuesdays. Very, very, very important, okay? Please do some donations um you can donate to anybody or to people who represent Mars, you know, like military and all this. Uh, that is also fine. But please do some donation. If, if you just, just, just do, please do it. All right. Very, very, very important. Donations are very important. Number seven, please fast on Ekadashis and on the eighth Lord's day. Mm -hmm. Ekadashis, Ekadashi fasting. All right. So Ekadashis are special days when they are they're very dear to Lord Vishnu and on Ekadashis, uh, Lord Vishnu had blessed Kali Raj, who is the personification of Kali Yuga, the present time that we are living in, that even if they offer grains to me on Ekadashi, I will not accept. So today, as I am making this video, is also Ekadashi. <laughs> Alright. So therefore, <clears throat> very, very, very important, please follow Ekadashis. On Ekadashis, you, you should not eat grains, okay? Very, very, very important. You should not eat meat, fish, eggs, onion, garlic or any kind of grains. 
you should only eat the food which is eaten during ekadashi so okay you can take buckwheat you can eat you know this uh, i mean the list is very long things which you can eat and which you cannot right so please go and google ekadashis and try to follow it depending on your location you can go to drikpanchang.com and find when is the ekadashi for you in the region that you live okay because it changes along with your location the panchang will change so depending on where you are so for example this whole month next 50 days if you are in this place like you know suppose you are you know you will be in delhi or mumbai or wherever in your house indore or wherever california west virginia wherever then check it in advance and prepare all right and on the next day of the ekadashi which is dwadashi you should break your fast depending on the paran time in drikpanchang.com you will find this please go to drikpanchang.com d r i k p a n c h a n g c o m please do the work please all right thank you so do the fasting on the eighth lord's day also now on the day of the eighth lord also you should try to do ekadashi so for example uh, if your eighth lord is like you know jupiter then on thursdays you should avoid eating meat fish eggs and uh, also grains okay so do do whatever is possible ideally you should do every week on the day of the eighth lord and also monthly twice at least you you will get ekadashis you can get more also but minimum two times every month so those days you should you must do fasting all right ekadashi fasting okay and on the eighth lord's day uh, you can fast till noon at least no no food nothing no food no water depending on your situation okay don't be hospitalized and then tell the police that he told me to do it <laughs> do it after consultation with your doctor and with your uh, parents or teachers or anybody you know who is a uh, guardian to you right very important so this is the seventh remedy very important and last but not the least very 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 important read one shloka of the shrimad bhagavatam every day if you read this that is it you don't need to do anything else all right so among all these remedies the first and the eighth are most powerful everything else will fall secondary all right so does not that does not mean the other six are not important but if you do the first and the eighth properly then that's it you are protected so shrimad bhagavatam as you know is the crest jewel of all the vedic literatures it is amalam puranam right it is it is the crest jewel of all the vedic knowledge that is there night it is paramhamsa samhita one which is read and practiced and admired and cherished and followed by the paramhamsas the great personalities right so therefore please watch this video again and this was a heavy one but i had to speak it out all right thank you so much for your patience don't forget to share this video with somebody whose eighth house is activated and don't worry do it and god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him why did you do the remedies all right take care jai sri ram jai prahlad narsimha dev